So Sabine, uh, I just watched the, uh, your, your film Generation Zap yesterday morning and it is awesome. Really, really good job, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Coming from you, uh, after what you've done with your film, it's, it's really a compliment and I, I, it means a lot, thank you. Well, we, um, I, I wanted to fast track this, this message just getting out to our subscribers because um, it just released uh, this week on DVD and iTunes, is it on Amazon as well? What are the platforms? Where can people see Generations Out? Actually, just got it was it was released for pre-orders today. Is like the day it got released today, basically. So it's on Amazon, iTunes, um, Xbox, Vimeo, Vudu, um, Steam, I believe. Excellent. So there's a link below where uh, everybody can can watch it, share it, get the word out. I, I just have to say, like, I mean, uh, I left a comment on your, your guys' Facebook page as well. Like I thought Take Back Your Power did a good job explaining the EMF issue, but you guys hit it out of the park. I mean, our subscribers are, most of them are aware of the, you know, another uh, problem the, the, that's exposed in the movie Vaxxed. And that, I thought that was extremely well done. Generation Zap is on, at least on par with the quality and the storytelling and the visuals and everything that you did. Uh, in Generations App, at least on par, if not even better, a step up from Vax. So uh, I can't speak highly enough about, about your work. And thank you for just thank you. bringing this forward to humanity. I, I, I have to ask you, um, you know, what are some of the early reactions you're getting? Because you've done some early screenings and, and you know, press kits and so well, forth. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, we've had, um, we've had a, um, a great start because we've been having our distribution model is before we had it on DVD and all the uh, on digital, we had a community screening. So basically we would encourage people to host a screening, uh, a home screening or a public screening, and they get the licensing rights to actually show the film and sell tickets and all that, um, to engage the community in a discussion. And what we found is, at first, it's really a movie that you want to see with other people because that's when you can make a change and that's when you create a discussion. It's not easy, especially as a parent, uh, being a parent and you being a parent, as you know, having kids and telling them why they can't have a, a cell phone before they turn 16 or whatever age you choose as a parent or why they shouldn't have safety guidelines or why when their friends come home, they can't do the things that other kids do. So. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really, it was important to have those discussion guides, um, whether it was, um, and the, the discussion was led by the person hosting the screening or by an expert or Q and A with myself and other experts. Um, so we've had a lot of demand, uh, like I was saying in one of my uh, Facebook lives is that the, the second most asked question was when is the DVD coming out? Mm -hmm. So it's finally today. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, how many interviews did you do actually in the in the course in of the making film? this and in, in the film to make the film? And how long of a process was it? Oh, it was a long process. It was a four, five, four to five year process. By the time I got the idea, I did the proposal, got some grants, did two Kickstarter campaigns. Yeah. Um, on which you helped me on my second um, Kickstarter campaign. I remember that, I was very gracious of you. Um, and having donations make the film. So it took about, you know, until today, it's actually five years. I had a lot of interviews didn't make it into the movie. Yeah. You know how it is as a documentary, you start with why an idea, you interviews, interview many different experts and then you have to cut it down. Some things unfortunately end up on the on the cutting floor because there's a storytelling that you need to do. So I probably had 20, 25 hours of footage of interviews and I had to cut it down to 74 minutes and then I added the 45 minutes of interviews in the um, in the DVD only. Okay. So for instance, screen addiction was not really addressed in the film because there was a great movie that had come out at the, at the same time it's called Screenagers and they had a lot of community screenings so we didn't really uh, address 
screen addiction, but in the extended interviews we do. Okay, so you buy the DVD, you get the 45 minutes extra that you yeah. don't even see on the streaming. Yeah. Okay. Um, so can you tell us about some challenges, maybe one or two challenges you had in this? Because I, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, the hardest thing in my life up, up, uh, up until that point to go through that process to make Take Back Your Power for me. It's interesting. I mean, you, 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 you end up having the same challenges yeah. as a filmmaker uh, or as an individual, as an activist that wants to tell a story. Um, the beauty um, today is that the technology allows you to do that. So when I was a film, uh, I was a film editor for a long time and I edited on 35 millimeter and 16 millimeter. So I remember that that time and I, I shot my um, some shorts in 16 and my feature film not that long ago, but 10 years ago on 35. Um, so, because I, I shot it in the desert in the Middle East and I couldn't use digi digital cameras because of the dust. It wasn't um, as technologically advanced as, as it is today. We couldn't control the light in the same way. So I, I did shoot in 35. Mm -hmm. So I am a filmmaker. What was the challenge for me was to become an activist, actually. It's the other way around. Okay. Because you want to tell a story as a filmmaker and you realize that it's not only about making a movie, it's about the making a change in people's lives in their homes after the movie's done. And that was the challenge for me. How do you get to that? Yeah. Um, what can people do in addition to buying the movie and sharing it and getting the word out about Generation Zap? Um, what, and there's some amazing takeaways in the closing credits, action steps there. Um, but just uh, one or two things, what can people do to be part of this you know, the wave of Generations app as it gets out there and to be part of like changing the, the, uh, the discussion, bringing awareness um, in the bigger picture so that we can get Wi-Fi out of school, so we can get smart meters off people's houses and solve this problem. Um, well, I, I do think it starts with awareness. I think that, um, and see, that's the, that's the difference is that as I was making the movie, I was discovering more about um, EMFs and Wi-Fi and all that um, because at first the, the movie was about Wi-Fi in schools and then it, I had to extend it to smart meters and um, phone yeah. And, yeah, and 5G and all that so I think that really you know there's different level of activism and activism can be exhausting, it can, it's time consuming, it can be costly, it can be uh, nerve wracking because you can also lose your friends and, and sometimes your family if you're too, um, I guess, uh, too aggressive about the issues that are at heart. So I, I'm a mild activist because I speak better with words than, uh, with, with not words, but with images in making the film. Mm as a tool for then activists who want to make a change to take the film and inform the people around them. Because I really seriously believe that if a class, you take a class of 30 students, if you show the film to the 30 parents of those students, those 30 parents are going to ask for safety guidelines. And it's, a, it's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that change start with your own neighborhood before it can move out and become bigger and bigger and then go to, you know, states and legislations and um, federal place. So I, I would say get the DVD, start by understanding what it is that's around you, give it to other people and then start, an, start a conversation so you can make an immediate change in your classroom. Once you've done your classroom, go to the next classroom and then go to the next school and move on that way. Yeah, and then, and then sign up at Empower Movement and hold, hold them live. Right. But really, it comes down to us being responsible first though, doesn't it? And you're, the film does a tremendous job about what we can each do uh, to be responsible for ourselves and for, for our family and for our children. And, and then to, to kind of, to go out from there, right? Yeah, and that's that's why again I'm uh, I want to stress on that because you're right. It's a di there's different form of activism like the in power movement, 
is for people who are a step ahead in a way that understand the issue hmm. of um, exposure through a smart meter and and that are um, fighting against the system because they want to they they want to they have the right to know they want to have the right to know and they want you know to have legislation they 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 have the awareness already so they're ready to do the action generation zap addresses itself to the to the people who don't have the awareness already so it's okay. almost as if it's it's the chapter before getting into the in power movement you yeah. see generation zap and you go oh my god what do i do i i start reducing my exposure in my home yeah. i do something in my school then i join a movement to stop it stop 5g or stop it from going further and have people be accountable for what's happening yeah excellent well um we are just a smaller network but i'm you know going to be going to bat for you and and continue to um to share the importance of uh of, of your work and of generations out okay. and I, I hope that it quickly gets out there um to to many many eventually millions of people because you've done an excellent job thank you so much for taking a few minutes to be with us today and um there's a there's, for everyone watching, there's a, a link below uh, where you can purchase, where you can watch it online or purchase the DVD. You get the 45 minutes extra of extra content. You support uh, Sabine. You support her you know, and work and, and promotional efforts in the film getting out there to more people. And uh, we just um, you know, encourage everyone to do that. So Sabine, thank you so much. And um, uh, thank you, Josh. Yeah, really, really good job again. What, what are you gonna do from here? What are your next steps? Oh, I was thinking of different projects already, <laughs> but um, I, I want to add that I really hope, thank you for, for um, giving this platform and this voice to the film. And I, and I really think that the film is the, like the first chapter of your work, how people can see this and then they can, they can take action with uh, the In Power movement generationsapp.com and if you go to watch the film you can see all the digi different digital platforms it's on vimeo voodoo amazon itunes and we'd appreciate reviews i need reviews on uh, amazon because it came out today and i have zero reviews so that'd be great if you've seen the film and you see this um uh interview then i'd appreciate the review and if you haven't seen the film well then it's time to get the dvd <laughs> absolutely sabine thank you so much for taking the time to join us and uh... Have a great day. Thank you. If I ask you how much more radiation does penetrate your body today compared to like 10 years ago, is it twice as much, three times as much? No, it's a quintillion times more. That's a one with 18 zeros. In France, they had some of the first adopters of Wi-Fi. Now they're recognizing that the Wi-Fi is potentially harmful to school children, so they're getting rid of it in elementary schools. Could where you carry your cell phone make you sick? Radio frequency emissions from the school's strong wireless network has triggered headaches, nosebleeds, and nausea. Smart meters are replacing the analog meters on your home. Some say such meters are making them sick. Nobody has taken into account the cumulative radiation that we are all getting, especially children. Had there been pre-market testing, cell phones never would have made it into the marketplace. The, the manufacturers actually tell people in the instruction manual, which I, I've never read, not to put the cell phone against your ear. Radio frequency radiation are in fact cancer causing and are perhaps a cause of neurological diseases and cognitive problems and developmental problems in children. The wireless industry spends $100 million a year lobbying the Congress. So it's really hard to go up against the power of this industry, even when you have the facts on your side. We urgently need more research. We have almost no US funded research in this area. Scientists decided it was time to counter the industry claims that there is no evidence. Good evening, the World Health Organization today said cell phones are possibly carcinogenic. It puts it in the company of several other kinds of things like lead, as well as engine exhaust and chloroform. 
These are all things that immediately will reduce your exposure. Use a wired earpiece. Concentrate on speaker phone. A wired computer classroom will not expose your child to radio frequency radiation. I do have a certain sense of optimism that eventually the right thing will happen like it did with tobacco, like it did with asbestos. 